how to use the law to make more money. That's going to be today's episode. So, you know, we have a very, very special guest in the studio with us today, coming all the way from the beautiful city and state of Utah. You know, I'm in Denver, Colorado, and of course, we are here live in Honolulu, Hawaii. So hopefully you guys and girls are having a great afternoon there in Hawaii. And for all the people that are catching the playback, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. I'm Prince Dykes. This is, Prince, this is the Prince of Investment coming to you guys and girls live in the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. Now, how to make more money with using the law. We know that in business and investing, you got the law, you got politics, so many other ways. Very interesting thing that came across my desk today. So I brought in a very special guest. I'll give you a little soft introduction. He's an attorney, Lee R. Phillips. He's a counselor of the United States Supreme Court, which is very interesting, I thought, when I saw that. You know, he has his degrees, he has his licenses, real estate, mortgage backing, security, life insurance, registered investment advisor, RAs, all these type of things, nationally recognized in the field of business structure, asset protection, financial planning, estate planning, and he is the founder of Legal Lease Corporation, a company that specializes in solving asset protection and tax problems for high net worth individuals. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, today, let's go ahead and bring in our special guest, Mr. Phillips, how are you doing today, sir? I'm great, how are you, Prince? I'm doing good, definitely like to have you on. Did I botch your introduction by any way? Nope, I, th I think it was more than, uh, more than reasonable. Now I gotta ask this question. One thing while I was looking at your bio, what have you written a book? I didn't see a book on you. I've written about 19 books. I haven't, I haven't, I didn't see the 19 books. I didn't come across my desk. Oh, so you've okay. written 19 books, right? Yes, sir. Nice, nice. Okay. So since I missed that in your bio, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, so people you know, who may not be familiar with you? Well, I have a really sordid background. I have a bachelor's in geology and physics and a master's in nuclear chemistry, and then a law degree. <laughs> and uh, the short story is, is when I was 27, I got uh, cancer, spent five months in intensive wow. care, and didn't work for three years, and we lost everything. So asset protection kind of became a focus of mine. And then as I matured along, I figured out your biggest asset protection threat is actually the IRS, the government. They're taking a third of whatever you're making. That's an asset problem for me. And so I went uh, pretty deep into taxes. I'm a U.S. federal tax court attorney and, and uh, do a fair amount in taxes. So if you're going to use the law, what we need to do is set up the structures so that you get the maximum tax benefit. You can't turn the crank any faster. You're, you're working as hard as you can. Everybody's working as hard as they can. But if we play the game a little smarter and we can maybe shave 5 or 10% off the taxes, that's a big deal. In fact, it's a bigger deal than most people think it is. Mm. Uh, you ever seen the dollar double 20 times trick, Prince? No, I haven't seen that one. Let's take a dollar and double it 20 times. One dollar, two dollars, four dollars, eight dollars, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. You got it? Mm-hmm. You end up with a million forty-eight thousand in tax. But wait, wait, wait. There, there's no no uh tax on that, is there? Or excuse me, you, you end up with a million forty-eight in cash, okay? Cash. Mm -hmm. But there's no tax on that. Everything you do is taxed. I mean, you make an investment, you pay tax on it every year, right? Unless it's in an IRA or something. Mm -hmm. So let's tax it. Let's tax it at 40%. Between federal and state, a lot of people, 40% tax. Okay. Uh, so I've got $1 and I double it to two, but I have to, uh, have to tax the extra dollar. So I don't end up with $2. I end up with a buck sixty because I tax the extra dollar at 40%, right? Mm -hmm. Double a buck sixty, that's three twenty, but I've got to tax the extra buck sixty. So I don't end up with three twenty, I end up with two fifty-six. Mm -hmm. So over here I doubled it twenty times. I have a million and forty-eight thousand dollars plus. So a million bucks. Over here, I've taxed it at forty percent. That means I've lost forty percent of a million dollars. 
that's a big deal to me. So I'm going to ask everybody, do I have 600? Let's see if I tax 40% off a million. I got 600,000 left, right? Mm -hmm. Do I really? Thanks. Mm. No way. Uh, do I have, okay, uh, do I have $400,000 left? Do I have 200000 left? Do I have 100000 left? Do I have 50000 left? Do I have 25000 left? How much do I have over here? Over here, without the tax, I've got a million forty-eight thousand. Over here, with the tax, I have a grand total of twelve thousand and eighty-nine dollars. Out all of the taxes. That's all the result of taxes. We went from a million forty-eight down to twelve thousand. What the eighth wonder of the world is? What compound interest? Mm -hmm. Remember that one? Yeah. What people don't understand is taxes are compound interest in reverse. Uh, so if I say we can save you 10, 15, 20% on your taxes, that's a big deal. That's not $200 out of 1,000. That's millions of dollars over your lifetime. It's huge. So let's use the legal structures. We'll use them for asset protection. And we're going to use them for tax structuring. And a lot of people set up their LLC. And I meet people all the time in live events. I do lots of live events. And the people come up to me and say, oh, I've got an LLC. And I say, okay, good. How is it taxed? And they look at me and they go, well, I don't know. Well, if they're taking 30% of your money, don't you think you maybe ought to understand how they're getting it? Because if I could save you, 10 or 20 or 50% of that, that's a big deal. So let's tax it properly. Let's set it up properly. And that's how you use the law to make more money. Does it sound reasonable, Prince? Definitely sounds reasonable to, uh, like I always tell people, tax avoidance. It's a big difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance. Huge, so, huge, huge difference there. Yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> so, you know, ways to limit your tax liability right it's always you know like you're saying hey you do the same thing you're doing but i'm going to show you how to increase it by 15 percent you know like what's you know that's a very interesting thing myself i have a llc and i'm a registered investment advisor here in colorado too so when you say hey you got the, your llc how are you being taxed what is your answer to that what is a better well, tax should effective put, way should i put you on the spot do you know how it's being taxed your LLC. Um, are you, yeah, you put me on the spot. Are you doing your financial business through your LLC? Yes. Okay. You are selling goods and services, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Income that you're getting is, we're going to call it non-passive or ordinary income, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Rents and royalties and stuff, they're passive income. You're doing earned income. So you need to have your LLC taxed under subchapter S of the IRS code. That way, the law says you can take a reasonable salary, and then the rest of it, we're going to distribute out. But this distribution is not subject to the Social Security, FICA, FUTA, and all that crap. So you save 15.3% immediately off mm. of this distributed amount. I have to, according to the law, I have to take my reasonable salary, but then I can come in and I can distribute the rest of it and save mm -hmm. immediately 15.3%. Now, do I need to turn into an S-Corp in order to make this happen? Yes, you do. That's mm -hmm. the only way you can make this one happen. So, and, and you would say that is the, look at Prince right here is getting uh tax. <laughs> I, I'm going to take you out of the woodshed, Prince, That's and beat on you. <laughs> You need, okay. you need to understand how you're getting taxed because that's how they're getting your money. Yeah. And if you've got earned income, the best way to have it taxed is a subchapter S entity. Okay. I can have a corporation or I can have a uh, an LLC taxed mm -hmm. under subchapter S of the IRS code. Now, if your rents are coming from real estate, passive income, we call it, then you want your... LLC taxed as a partnership. 
that means you need more than one person as a partner, right? Partner. Yeah. You got to have at least two owners. And in Colorado, and now in many states, Colorado was actually the first problem state. Well, welcome to the problem state of Colorado, friends. <laughs> uh, there was a case early on, mm -hmm. and uh, the judge set aside what we call charging order protection in an LLC. He just said, nah, we're not going to ignore, we're going to ignore it. So Colorado was the first to say that single member LLCs don't get charging order protection. You have to have at least two members. So you need two two guys. Two I guess you could have a guy and a girl. I don't girl, know. Yeah. I, guess, I guess we shouldn't even do pronouns anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> but uh but you need two people, okay? Mm-hmm in order to get what we call a charging order protection. Do you know the charging order protection? No, I'm not familiar with the charging order protection. <clears throat> okay, in legal entities, you've got the corporate shield, which protects me from what happens out in the company. Gotcha, gotcha, all right. That's mm -hmm. the corporate shield. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. There's a reverse of that. We need to protect the assets of the company, the piece of real estate, the apartment building, whatever it is, that's held in the LLC from the personal problems of the owners. Uh, I can declare personal bankruptcy. If I declare personal bankruptcy or I get divorced or I hit a kid in the crosswalk on the way to church, those aren't business things. Those are personal. They come after me. Mm. If they come after me, the question is, can they get the assets of my company? If it's a corporation, the ans answer is absolutely yes. If it's an LLC, the answer is no, because the LLC has what we call charging order protection, which mm -hmm. protects the assets of the company from what happens to the owners of the company. Now, if you're an owner of IBM, IBM could care less if you lose your stock in IBM, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's your little company, there's you and maybe one other guy, if you lose all your shares of your stock, that's a big deal. The company's gone. Mm -hmm. So the LLC protects the company from what happens to you. And that's a big deal. That's why you're always today, today you're always going to use an LLC. Now, uh, you, we just spoke about this, right? You were saying, hey, you got it. But you're saying for tax purposes, the S Corp is better. But for protection, you got the LLC. No, 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 no. I didn't say that, friends. Okay. I'm, I, I said that you needed to have your LLC taxed under subchapter S of Got the IRS. Got it. Gotcha. The, the, the IRS doesn't know whether you have a corporation or an LLC. They don't care. The only hmm. thing they know is you have a company that's taxed according to the rules of subchapter S. You could have a company, an LLC or a corporation, taxed using the rules of Chapter C. We call that mm. a C corporation. Yeah, this, yeah. But it's actually an LLC taxed under Chapter C of the IRS code. So I can have an LLC taxed under the partnership rules of an IRS code. Mm -hmm. I can have an LLC taxed under the subchapter S rules of an IRS code. I can have an LLC taxed under Chapter C of the IRS code. The wow. IRS doesn't care how you tax an LLC. That's pretty cool. What if you're someone that has, hey, I have book royalties, I own properties, I have blah, blah, blah. It's like a conglomerate and it's an LLC. How would you, I guess, structure that tax, tax wise? Well, two issues here. One is uh, you're getting passive income from the royalties and the rents and stuff. You may be getting earned income or non-passive income from your uh, day job, so to speak, your mm -hmm. financial pl planning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I would separate those into two separate LLCs. One taxed as a partnership and one taxed under subchapter S. Uh, because I don't want to bring in the rents and stuff into this LLC because then I have to pay a reasonable salary 
based upon the addition of the rents into this LLC that's taxed under subchapter S. Mm. So I want the rents, the passive income separate. Also, the second issue is uh, you've got a liability as a financial planner. You've got a liability as a business owner. That's different than the liability associated with your rental unit or your royalties from your book. I mean, you're not going to ever get sued because you're getting royalties from a book, are you? Hopefully. So <laughs> let's keep those assets separate from the business because if the business has a problem, any of the assets in the LLC could be used to satisfy that problem. Mm. The corporate shield protects me, the owner, but the assets in the company are available to handle that problem. But if I have the book royalties and my rents over in this company, they're not available if there's a problem in the business. Mm. They're outside. They can't get those because of the charging order protection. They can sue me personally, but they still can't get these assets, the rents, the piece of property in this LLC. Even though there's a problem in the, the company, I have to declare bankruptcy in the company. They're still not going to get these assets in the LLC that holds my real estate properties. Okay. Now, as an um, attorney, right, some people say, well, you know, I, I get this question all the time. You know, hey, I got a nine to five. I have a W-2. My wife has a W-2. What are some ways I can live, you know, limit my income, you know, my taxes? What are some ways that you would say to that? Well, if you're a W-2, there's basically nothing you can do. Mm. You're locked in. Your taxes are there. Your little company and your real estate are your two tax shelters. And the problem is your accountant never brings you in, puts his arm around you and says, you know, we really need to teach you how to use your little company. We really need to teach you how to use your real estate as a tax shelter. They don't do that. And yet your little company and your real estate, your rental real estate is a tax shelter, a great tax shelters. And if you learn to use the company, if you learn to use the real estate as a tax shelter, you can make a lot of money. I mean, Trump can't let even the real estate investors see his tax returns. Because even the people who think that they know about real estate as a tax shelter, if they actually understood what could be done with real estate as a tax shelter, it'd blow their mind. Mm. Uh, and, and, I want to if you, it, if you it, got, it's I, mind blowing. I want to walk down that path. How okay. is real estate a good tax shelter? How does that really work? We always hear about it. How does that work? Well, real estate gives you the ability, they say, to get an economic gain at a tax loss. Um, can I run some rough numbers by you and you kind of think along sure. with me? Mm -hmm. Let's say I buy a $400,000 piece of property, okay? And I understand that that's the mud shack in the in in the middle of Honolulu, uh four hundred thousand. But uh but I pay four hundred thousand for a piece of property. I have to put twenty percent down. That's eighty thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So what's my total investment in this piece of property? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Okay. I rent it. Let's say I get three thousand dollars a month in rent. And my uh my Mortgage payment is twenty five hundred bucks a month. Mm -hmm. That means I get five hundred dollars in cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. So that means I get six thousand over the year in cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, on this piece of property, I can deduct the amount of interest that I pay on my mortgage, can't I? Yes. I can deduct deduct the insurance and the property taxes and everything else. Mm -hmm. So uh, in reality, uh, and, and the other thing I can do is I can depreciate this piece of property, can't I? So depreciate or appreciate? Depreciate. 
Mm. Uh, so it's a $400,000 piece of property. I can't depreciate the land. So let's say the land's 300,000 or uh, is 100,000 just for round numbers. Mm -hmm. That means I'm depreciating $300,000 and that has to be done. I'm basically deducting it. I can deduct $300,000. Mm. But the law says I can't deduct it all at once. If this is a residential piece of property, I have to deduct a little piece of that, one twenty seventh and a half over 27 and a half years. So at the end of the 27 and a half years, I've basically written off, I've deducted the full $300,000. So uh, what is that? Four, five, six thousand dollars in depreciation. Mm hmm. So by the time I pay the property taxes, I get the depreciation and everything else. I've made six thousand dollars. I actually put uh, six thousand into my pocket. I had the expenses of the mortgage, and I had the property taxes. Let's say I actually put out of this six thousand a thousand dollars into my pocket. So I've made a thousand dollars free and clear, right? Mm -hmm. But over here, I've got like twelve thousand dollars, six thousand of my depreciation, six thousand in the mortgages and everything else, the interest. So I've got twelve thousand dollars in deduction over here. So I get a thousand bucks, but I don't pay any tax on it because mm. I can offset it with all of this depreciation, this the, these these deductions. Got it. So in reality, over here, I've got two or three thousand dollars in tax loss that I didn't even use that can carry forward every year until I sell the property if it needs me. But I've got a couple of thousand dollars over here in losses, and I've put a thousand bucks into my pocket tax free. That's a pretty cool. Uh, tax shelter now so, let, let me run mm -hmm. one one more thing mm -hmm. so if i've got a thousand bucks i've made a thousand bucks on an eighty thousand dollar uh investment what's that return three or four percent not a lot mm -hmm. and so i've got a small percentage return but i didn't take into account the little piece of appreciation that i've paid every year and the appreciation, uh, 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 the little piece on the mortgage I paid each year, and the appreciation of the property. Bottom line is I have like a 30% return, which is a big deal. Very big, okay. Now your little business, you can deduct your cell phone, you can deduct uh, all of the costs of your car when you go around, you can deduct a lot of things, and you can't do any of this with your W-2 job. So, Prince, you're going to have to get a little company, invest in real estate, do something to control your taxes, and you are going to use an LLC for the asset protection. And by the way, if your folks want, uh, I've got a, uh, an ebook called 10 Tax Tips. I go through this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they're welcome to have that. It's free. They can just go to my website, legalese.com forward slash think. We'll put that in and, and we'll uh, we'll email that out to them. Definitely. Now, people that listen to this and they're saying, wow, I want to get in contact with him. I want to talk to him. What are the ways that people can get in contact with you? I, the bad news is, or the good news is, I don't take clients. I just educate and help people. This is, <laughs> well, someone said, I want, well, you know, definitely one thing is, can I have you back on? I definitely got to have you back on. You can have me back on. I'd be happy to come back, Prince, no problem. I do have an entire staff of tax attorneys and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, accountants, enrolled agents. They do the tax stuff. They do take clients. If, okay. if you've got a huge tax problem, they can help you, particularly if you owe the IRS money and you're arguing with them. They can do the resolution stuff really good. Mm. Okay. So, so I did want to ask this question. What was your pathway into you know like the supreme court the consulting stuff like that what's your tie into that well i started to uh 
after I got sick, I started to practice law in the areas of wills and trusts and stuff. And then I started to write about it and I wrote the books and became, uh, I'm going to say, kind of famous for teaching mm -hmm. people what they can do. Uh, in the meantime, I, I got good enough at lawyering that I could go to the Supreme Court and argue cases. And you have to apply to be admitted there and that sort of stuff. The same with the federal tax, fact, tax courts. So I've, I've done the legal side of it, but I've enjoyed, and now I'm kind of three quarters retired, I've enjoyed the educational part of it too. And I speak in front of big, big audiences, live audiences. Uh, so I, I think they're definitely going to have to have me over with, uh, with Think Tech Hawaii and, mm -hmm. and have to speak to one of their groups. Nice. That's Think Tech Hawaii. And especially if you're here in Denver, Colorado, I'd love to get you in the studio too. Okay. Uh, Definitely, you know. So, but um, yes, for people out there, what do you want to leave the audience with before we get out of here? Just pay attention to your taxes. The two ways that you can work with it are either a small business or your real estate investing. You need to do one of those two. Otherwise, you're just going to work a day job. And that's going to be the end of it. Mm. And now, if people out there, they want to, you know, I, I kind of touched on this earlier. You, you do social media, how people get in contact with you. I want more from Mr. Phillips. How they, can I get in contact? They can just go to legalese.com and there's phone numbers and stuff there. Okay. Well, I, I'm old enough that I'm not too social, Prince. I'm, <laughs> I got the LinkedIn accounts and all that crap, but I check them once every four years, whether I need to or not. Okay. Well, definitely, it was great having you on. We got to get running, and I would definitely reach out because I definitely want to get some more from you and definitely have you back on the show as well. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, we got to deal with time and time crunches, but we'll make it happen. understand. Uh, all right. Thank you for coming on, Mr. Phillips. Ladies and gentlemen, as you guys and girls already know, my name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investment. And to the next video podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.